Hello and welcome to Saving Lives in Slow Motion. Today, I'd like to talk about bloating. Now, why have I dedicated a whole episode to bloating? Well, a few reasons. One is that I'm away for the next couple of weeks and I wanted some short, snappy, useful episodes um, covering really common things. And bloating must be in the top two or three symptoms that come to the doctor's surgery. And if it doesn't come to us, then it's still very high up there in terms of what most people struggle with on a daily basis. Now, sometimes it's serious most of the time it's not and I just thought it'd be nice to unpack bloating and just talk through the reasons behind it. So um, if we just start with how you crunch down on a symptom if someone tells you that they they're getting bloating or you feel that you're getting bloating there's an old adage in medicine that everything falls out of the history as in if you listen to the story of how a symptom has evolved you can pretty much work out what's behind it i still think that's largely true it's not always the case but more than 90 percent of the time i'd agree with that and i guess what you've got to do with any symptom is tie it in with other things is it related to eating is it related to any particular activity does it just come randomly when did it start And do you have any other symptoms associated with it? For example, weight loss or diarrhea or other random things like cramps or pins and needles. It's also a very nebulous symptom. It's almost like the opposite end of if you break your leg. At least you know what the diagnosis is there. Bloating is a bit more, could be something, could be nothing. So most cases of bloating are likely to be related to the gut in some way, shape or form. And things to look out for are, is it related to certain foods? So, for example, quite a common one that people find is that they get bloated after wheat and milk products. Very common. And one of the first things to do with any symptom, particularly bloating, is to keep a diary. Other people find that they get bloated straight after meals. Again, a very common one. Lots of reasons for this. It might be that you're swallowing air. It might be that you have something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, which I cover in in a bit more detail in my episode on gut symptoms. And actually that is a hallmark symptom, immediate bloating after meals. And occasionally it's just an odd reaction to foods. It's not an allergy as such, but you'll see that there are companies out there that now test something called IgG um, reactions to food. And this is where, this is I've covered this before, it's called molecular mimicry, where the immune system mistakes the shape of a molecule in a particular food and then partially reacts to it. The most common example of this is people who get swollen lips when they eat fruits. They have oral allergy syndrome. They're often also allergic to birch pollen and that's because the molecules in both cases look so similar to the immune system. But that's a bit more nebulous and you wouldn't just test for that straight off. You can do, but again, it's all about what's in your story. Is it linked to food? Now the gut's, you know, a long piece of equipment. It starts at your mouth and it ends at your anus. So if we move slightly higher up, another reason for bloating is if you don't have enough digestive power or digestive enzymes. And this can be if you've got a sluggish gallbladder, say it's full of stones or you've got sludge in there, or if you don't have digestive enzymes that are working efficiently. So remember that we need to break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And and as we get older, our digestive enzymes work less efficiently. So for example, lactase breaks down lactose, which is the sugar in milk. And some people just don't have lactase anyway, um, or, or a, a low level of it. So for example, I don't have much if any lactase, because I'm missing a gene called MCM6, which is the one that codes for lactase. So that means every time I drink milk, I get a bloated stomach or I get, you know, runny motions, let's just say. 
Other things at play include H. pylori infection. One in two people on the planet have this bacteria in the pit of their stomach, and that can lead to all sorts of symptoms, including heartburn, but also sometimes belching or bloating further up in the gut. Okay, other causes of bloating. So I mentioned SIBO earlier on. One of the reasons that that is so distressing is that you get an overgrowth of unfavourable bacteria. So the balance of good and bad bacteria is tilted towards the bad bacteria and they make a lot of gas. And and essentially gas is one of the things that can lead to that sensation of bloating. Now most gas is made on the right hand side of the large bowel and often from you know eating things that are very good for us. Foods that ferment create a lot of gas. Now these are called FODMAPs and they are some of the, the world's healthiest foods and if you have been given a diagnosis of IBS and you know in a lot of cases with IBS the underlying reason can be SIBO not always and some of the things I've just mentioned um, you might find if you eat things like asparagus or Brussels sprouts you know um, you become quite windy most of us do again that will fall out if you keep a diary so I've dotted around a bit because that kind of bloating is in your large intestine. What I've missed out in the middle between digestive enzymes, which, by the way, you stimulate by chewing your food well. So going back up towards the mouth, which is where the gut starts, make sure you really chew your food and eat slowly. Coming further down, obviously that goes from your gullet into your stomach. Now, another reason for bloating sometimes is if you've got a problem with your gastroesophageal junction. This is where your gullet meets your stomach and occasionally there's a, there's a valve there that becomes incompetent as we get older. Again, over the age of 40, it's much more common. Lots of people present with heartburn or acid symptoms, and that can lead to bloating. But very often, if you modify what you're eating and how you're eating and when you're eating, remember how, what and when, the golden triad in my book, you can really help that. So again, chewing your food, making sure that you avoid the obvious things that would be bad for anyone's gut really lots of fizzy drinks too much alcohol too much coffee too many spicy foods all the all that stuff i mean they're all fine in moderation obviously so that's worth bearing in mind if you're getting bloating higher up we've talked about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth which affects the next part of the bowel which is the small intestine sort of a, in the middle of your abdomen if you like and coming further down to the large intestine, there are several things that can cause bloating. Now, if you are someone that doesn't have a lot of fibre in your diet and tends towards constipation, that can cause bloating, partly from the constipation, but also if you're uh, over the age of 30, you may have the beginnings of something called diverticular. These are little pouches that stick out of the wall of our large intestine, often from years of long-term constipation or straining when you're on the loo and you tend to get symptoms of wind and bloating preventable with a high fiber diet so sorry if i'm racing through this it's um off the cuff and i'm, I'm kind of thinking it the way i would if a patient was in front of me one of the things i i i, I want to just stop and take stock of is your own story is really important here so if you take someone who has let's say, a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, or they have symptoms of SIBO, very often in their backstory they will have a story of heavy antibiotic use, often from childhood. And what this does is, because they the antibiotics can't tell the difference between good and bad bugs, they wipe out all of the healthy gut bugs, um, which are really the food for our immune system. Most of our immune system is in buried within the wall of our gut and so what nourishes that um, are bacteria that are in the gut and this is what the problem with SIBO is you know you suddenly have too many unfavorable bacteria which cause symptoms and can affect immune function as well so apart from your own habits if you like in terms of how what and when you eat and sleep and your stress levels, all of those things which are very important. It's also important to look at your story. It's like, well, hang on, have you had 
five lots of antibiotics in the last year for a dental infection, for example, that's going to affect your gut and that is likely to cause bloating. Important thing to remember. Now, a word about non-gut related bloating symptoms. Now, there are, there's always this worry about things that are sinister. They are very rare, but they're very important as well. So the one that during my career has really come to the fore is ovarian cancer. So bloating that's unexplained and isn't obviously from the gut uh, needs looking at, um, it, particularly in women. And you know, there are other conditions that are really hard to detect. For example, lymphoma. This is a real bugbear of mine. There's still no easy test that picks this up. So it's a cancer of your lymph glands effectively, but often doesn't present until it's too late with weight loss or glands that you can feel and doesn't always show up on scan, but sometimes that can present with mystery symptoms. Bloating is a is a rare one and that would only be if you have, you know, a lymphoma that's in that anatomical area. And of course actually one of the things I didn't mention is um sometimes fluid retention, particularly um, when women are coming up to their period, that can cause bloating as well. And the last one, which is right at the bottom of the gut, if we go further down um, to the rectal area, are hemorrhoids or piles. So it's interesting because the nerve supply is so rich there and they're right at the end of the gut. Um, hemorrhoids almost cause bloating partly by being there and sending, if you like, signals via the, the nerve supply of the gut further up. So people with hemorrhoids will often comp complain of bloating and actually once you get your hemorrhoids sorted, the bloating calms down. And again, largely preventable with a high fibre diet and good hydration. Okay, so that was bloating in a nutshell. I hope that was useful. Do let me know if this type of episode is of more interest to you, you know, these symptom-based clinical ones. And I know we live in a world of AI and automation, but generally, if you're worried about a symptom, definitely seek medical advice. Don't just rely on podcasts and um, search engines. Thanks again for listening. Do leave me a rating if you can, and let me know on social what you'd like me to cover. And until next time, do stay well, look after yourself. Take care. Bye for now.